It's amazing to me, first of all, that 50 years have transpired since this production was made. But I think the idea of presenting this wonderful score and show in a form that it's never been heard or seen, uh, featuring, you know, one of the greatest orchestras in the world, playing the music probably for the very first time ever, anywhere, in a form that will make it possible for the orchestra to fulfill its accompanimental role to the singers and still have this beautiful enveloping sound. Can you imagine the Philadelphia Orchestra strings playing these fabulous tunes? So I think it's a, it's a wonderful project that reanimates and extends the life of a great project which means so much to so many people and certainly will continue to do so. People often ask, how exciting is it to receive an Oscar, or two, or three? Uh, but I think, I, I think the human thing is, the first prize that you win is the one that you treasure. And uh, I have three children, and, and mostly they want the statue of Fiddler on the Roof more, more than others, because it was the first one that I received. And of course I was very, very happy. Uh, in those years, uh, the Motion Picture Academy uh, gave the Oscar in musical films if, if it was not an original score written for film, which Fiddler was not, it was written for the stage, the Oscar is presented to a musical director or person who adapts the person or pe persons that adapt the music to, to the film. And I was the lucky, happy, privileged recipient uh, of Oscar. Whether, what effect it had on my subsequent life, I don't know, maybe, maybe a little uh, uh, tidbit of joy, uh, bringing not only joy, but things that prizes like this do, depending on your personality, they can reinforce a kind of sense of optimism and confidence in the person receiving them, which is the best thing that can happen. Um, uh, the best result from it, I think. Fiddler on the Roof is a very broad uh, subject uh, done in, in a very simple way. This is a story of, you can say, even say a migrant people going into another country, maybe not being welcomed by the indigenous population and and yearning for their own place, their own life, which is everybody's dream. We all want to have a place of our own. I, I'm reminded of somewhere at the end of West Side Story, which says somewhere there's a place for us, somewhere where we can go that is our own, uh, that we belong, uh, that we're safe, uh, that we're secure, we're happy. And, and that's a Jewish story, but it's everybody's story. We all come from someplace. We're all, you know, we're now trying to all live, to learn how to live together without borders, without boundaries, with all of it. But I, I think, I, I think the story is never going to be old. It's as basic and human as any story can ever be. And as far as the show is concerned, I mean, it's so rich. I don't know, some, a scholar will be able to tell us where the line between Joe Stein, the writer, and, and Sholem Aleichem is, uh, because I, I think of things like, Tevye says to her, Golda, do you love me? And she says, for 25 years I've been doing your laundry, your cooking, giving your children, if that isn't love, what is? And Tevye says, I suppose I love you too. The, the, the word suppose, if you take that out, it's sentimental. Uh, but but with, it, with suppose in there, there's an irony to it, there's a richness to it that everybody, it's not just fiddler on the roof, it's not just a husband and wife. And then you have the husband and wife with the children. And the children, uh, Tevye and Golda, they're trying to raise the children to be free, to be freer than they have been, but also to be observant of the traditions and the respectful of the, 
of the uh, of the heritage and all the rest of it, and while giving them freedom. So you have of a progressivism and a conservatism all wrapped in this wonderful thing that in many ways, depending on how you think of it, is saved by the irony of the word suppose. It's, it's not sentimental, but it's every family. Every family's parents wish for their children. We all have it. So Fiddler on the Roof can be Japanese, it can be Iranian, it can be anything you like, and the Philadelphia Orchestra will have a diverse cast from, from, with the production which I think illustrates the point better than any words could ever do. It's fantastic. And then to come to the score, which is very simple, the little tunes that are based on kind of a, our understanding of what Eastern European Jewish, Jewish music was at that time. But they are profoundly good. Uh, so I don't think they will ever be dated or ever be irrelevant. Fiddler on the Roof is so much more than just what you see and hear if you think at all about the family, the children, the parents, the grandparents, the idea of, of love, especially with the word suppose. In preparation for the film, Norman Jewish and I went to Israel, and then we went up to the university in Jerusalem and spend a few days there, and it was wonderful for me because the music department was, they, they just welcomed me. If you're doing Fiddler on the Roof, come in here, we'll show you whatever you want to see, you know, or hear. And so they have a wonderful tape recording of Old Shtetl Band. Shtetl is the little Jewish village uh, where they would have a, a little band, a little orchestra, and I could hear early recordings of, of this and, and learn some very interesting things about the instrumentation of the shtetl band. Norman and I, in, in our trip to Israel, had a wonderful time and a wonderful sense of absorbing uh, what we could. The story of how the music got onto the stands of the Philadelphia Orchestra is interesting. The actual original pencil written scores and sketches of mine uh, were not picked up by a librarian at the recording session. They were put in, the, in, the, in a vault somewhere. We were not able to find that material. What we had was a, a, what we call a production part, which was, if you can imagine, the orchestra score would probably have 28 lines or 32 lines. These production parts would be reduced to maybe eight. And we had to, re, for Philadelphia, recreate a new score based on these the only extant parts we had, which were the production parts. So that was a tremendous job done on the part of the, the orchestra uh, to recreate and reproduce the score on paper and a great service to, the, to Fiddler on the Roof and a great service to anyone interested in hearing a symphony orchestra play this great score. <laughs>